yo, what's going on? And I ended up recording this whole video and not even realize I was not recording. I just wanted to start that off I'm a little bit salty about it. But today, hello, we're looking at the newest uh, swimsuit characters being Hal and Mao. I did not have Santafon at the moment, so his video will have to wait to a later time. Now these are the newest light units. They're light primal balance dagger units. The meme with light goes on where they have specialty units for every weapon that are very good and they just can't focus on one weapon type ever, apparently. Now, one thing with these units I will mention is that they do have very low base stats. So their attack and health base is extremely low. I believe it's even lower than Albert. So just keep that in mind. If because their kit is so overloaded, they try to quote unquote balance it out by giving them low base stats. Um, their Ogi is Pain Eternal. It gives them a crest upon using, and if you have Limiter Break on, you do gain a 2k shield for all allies. This skill is very, very good if you have it on, and the shield helps a ton with maintaining their Limiter Break. Um, generally, I go in order of skill 1, 2, and 3, but for this character, I will actually be going in 3, 1, 2, as their skill 3 is the enabler for this unit, and I find it to be very important to talk about. Now, as I mentioned, we'll be looking at her skill 3. Now, this skill is what pretty much enables the abilities for skill 1, 2, and, and, her, and their Ogi. It uh, gives them a massive boost to their attack, triple attack, damage cap, and dodge rate. There we go. Dodge rate. So, their attack boost is unique. A 40% attack boost that's unique. Very important. That means it benefits both Magna and Primal a ton. They get the... I believe 40% dodge rate, I may be wrong, I think it's 20. I looked at it online, so I, I, my memory may be wrong. They do gain a damage cap boost of 20%, which is really good. And they also gain around 40% TA. So, very, very strong skill. It is to, This is the way that they're balancing out their base stats by lowering it so that they don't become extremely busted with their skill 3. Now, I'll be looking at their skill one. Now, this skill is actually a very, very core skill for far right now. If you're, this skill enables the light to now do the trial number seven. It's plain damage to a foe based on its current HP. Now, with this skill, it does can it can be proc twice with limiter break in effect. So keep that in mind that it will proc the plain damage twice and the heal. The heal is a 2,000 heal at base. It does start at 1,000 and gain 200 per each stack of Aurora Crest on. It's capping at 2,000. So, very important to know that. Their skill 2 gives a Aurora Crest to all allies, a boost to light attack by 30% boost to light attack, and dark damage reduction. To be honest, I wish they capitalized damage and reduction. It's not a damage cut. So this skill is more similar to Uno skill four opposed to Uno skill three. It does not cut damage, so it does not stack with Phalanx. So if you're looking to get 100% damage cut, does not work for like that way. But you do gain a 20% damage reduction. Also, if you have limiter break in effect, you will gain 20% bonus damage to all allies, which is really, really, really good with this character. So this is one of the most core abilities that they have. It's on a great cooldown, six turns with three turns uptime. Very, very strong skill. Now we look at their passive skills. Uh, as I mentioned, the reason that they try to balance out this unit by giving them low stats, because they do have guaranteed multi-attacks. Very, very strong. Like Albert and other units with low stats, they get guaranteed multi-attacks. Also, skills and charge attack gain additional effect when limiter break is in effect. As I mentioned, limiter break is their, uh, is their, uh, 
I forgot the word I used. <laughs> Enabler <laughs> to the other skills. It enables them to do a lot more with the other skills. Now, what really pushes these characters over the edge, in my opinion, is their support skill two. This is the first time we ever had a skill like this. Boost to light allies damage dealt based on their number of Aurora Crest. This is ridiculous. I can't believe that we already reached the point where now we're getting a flat damage boost for everything. <laughs> we were getting skill damage, but now this is the first time we're getting a flat damage boost for everything, which is kind of ridiculous. You probably just heard that Windows no notification. I apologize for that. I can't help it. It happened when I was recording. But as I mentioned, the damage dealt boost does increase based on how many stacks of Aurora Crest you have. It caps at a 30k damage per auto with five stacks. You can do the math 30k minus five, or the minus five divided by five does equal out to 6k damage per crest. Very, very strong skill, especially in longer raids where you are able to attain five stacks. Really is what you're looking for the most. Keep in mind, it also applies if they're a sub ally, they don't even need to be in the front row. However, they do need to be alive. So if you do have them die and go into your back row, you need to revive them to gain that extra damage back. Keep that in mind. Now I'll be looking at their support skills, not for EMP skills. The EMP skills are actually okay. I wouldn't say that, like godlike or anything, but what you're really looking for in this unit is defense. The reason that you want defense so you take less damage while you have shield on. Shield is going to be your make it or break it type thing so that you can keep their skill three on for as long as possible, even in harder raids like Fa. Secondly, you want to increase their healing. The fact that they get a double heal does benefit them quite a bit. Then you do have another healer in Fun Fun, but who doesn't want more healing? You can just mash a little bit harder with them, so. I would recommend going in healing. Triple attack and critical damage. It really depends on your pool. If your damage is low, I recommend getting critical hit. Uh, it wouldn't help you that much, but it would help you a little bit more. The same thing with charge attack damage. It really depends on how strong you are. The weaker you are, the more you want to invest into that type of stuff, as you may have a hard time hitting damage cap. As for triple, triple is kind of like the last thing you want to invest into. They already have a very high natural triple attack. And if you combine it with units like Kambara and stuff like that, it, it just, it may be overkill. So that's like the last thing you want to invest into, depending on your team comp. That's my opinion, you may disagree. It really depends on what you have and what your, and what your pool looks like and stuff like that. Anyways, let's get to a fight with them and see how they perform. Okay, because I'll be showcasing them in the hardest raid in the game, I thought, why not let me showcase them in a really easy raid? So we taking on Dark Angel Olivia. I know, I didn't really. I, I just thought I'll give everybody a different perspective and see how it goes. Now, one thing I will note is that you do have to pay attention to their skill three and make sure that it's always on. Um, sometimes you can probably like miss out on it and it ends up hurting you in the long run. Let's start with Metatron here. This, this, this. This. It's a plain damage. Do we know we don't need the, 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 the damage? Well, might as well get it. It doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> the fact that they don't OG turn one does hurt them because on this turn, they are free to be hit. The light attack though on their skill two is very very good, in my opinion. Probably the best thing about them right now. I have the cage already. Fun fun, multi-pack! God darn it. Yeah, see, you're, they already got hit because of the way the, the boss fight is. It starts off with the AoE attack. So it's kind of hard for them. I'm actually not going to use that skill. You can see their damage cap. They hit the hardest right now on the team. To give you an idea, and they don't even have EMPs really. So if they were to have EMPs, you can really see how strong they can hit. 
They are cool. You know, this boss is strong. Oh my lord. So back to the boss. Hmm. I'm trying to feel bad for Ogie <laughs> of how little damage that I'm getting from the Ogie. Like their autos were doing work. I under care, right? With the bonus damage, way more than Ogie. No, I need to. I needed to gain a raw stack. <laughs> I need to gain stack. Give me my stack. I think we need one more turn for their bonus damage. They are, they are the decimated boss though. I believe they have one more, and they have two hits right now. Dude, this is gonna do quite a bit of damage. Oh my god! Oh, he's dying! He's dying! He's dying! He's dying. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is he dead? I think he's dead, right? Oh my god, it's dead, right? Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy Power creep is real! <laughs> so real! <laughs> oh my goodness! That, that, that was fast! What that, five turns? Seven turns? Jesus Christ! Well, that's them in a nutshell. We'll be using them in harder content. They just, they just annihilated the boss. Oh my god. Wow. wow. Jesus. That bonus damage is strong, strong, and Ogi, it ain't no joke. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that, and uh, later. Wow. Damn.